What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. My name is Miles with Holiday World out of Dallas, Texas. And behind me, I have a truly unique bunkhouse travel trailer here. This is a 2022 Keystone Passport 3401QD. And there is so much going on here that is so exciting. But the biggest thing is going to be that bunkhouse in the back where you have four double-sized bunks back there. It is unbelievable what they did in that bunk room. Plus, there is so much storage inside this RV as well. So whether you're a really large family with a lot of kids or your kids bring a lot of friends along, whatever it may be, this has the most sleeping capacity out of any bunkhouse travel trailer I've ever seen and even has more sleeping capacity than most bunkhouse fifth wheels. So let's go. Hey, welcome back to another video. If this is your first time tuning into one of my videos, I'm super excited that you're here. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy. And if you do get something out of this video, consider hitting the like button down below and definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you would like to connect with me on other social media platforms, links to my Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook are down below in the description where you can find other RV-related content that I upload regularly. And then finally, if you are interested in this RV, keep in mind I am in a sales position. I do not get paid by my company to come out here and make these videos. I just do this on my own own time in hopes of finding people like you that might be interested in this RV. So I would love to personally assist you in helping you make this RV yours. So you can either text me at the number on the screen there or there is a link down below in the description that you can fill out with some basic information that will help me best help you. So go down there and fill out that information if you are interested in this RV and let's get into the video. All right, y'all, welcome back to another video. This is the 2022 Keystone Passport 3401 QD. And this thing is truly unlike anything you've seen before. You'll see the floor plan and specs up on the screen here. And this is something where it's probably been about 18 months or so since I've had this model in stock. And this is my first chance to get a video of it. And I'm very excited about this because this is a super unique bunkhouse travel trailer. You can see by the floor plan there, you have four double-sized bunks on the back. It's also a Keystone product, so you're gonna have the 200 watt solar panel on the roof up there. It will come standard with that 200 watt solar panel. That's going to help keep your batteries charged. And this is part of the Passport GT series. So you see the GT on the front. Passport has two different lines. So they have these GT series here, and then you have the SL series. So these are going to be Passport's smaller style travel trailers. And you can see they're just a smaller profile than the GT series. And the GT series is just going to come with more equipment it's also going to be a little bit larger where like the SL series have a flat line roof or flat line ceiling, sorry. And the GT series are going to have a barreled ceiling. The GTs will also come with more equipment on the inside. Like this one has two TVs already installed, one in the bunk room and one in the living room area. Things like solid slam latch doors, stuff like that, that differentiates it from the SL series. And we're going to walk around the outside real quick, then we'll hop inside. It is Already, I think over 90 degrees here and it's pretty early in the morning here in Texas and it is so hot. It's going to be over 100 degrees today. So bear with me. I'm like two minutes into filming this and I'm already sweating. But you have slam latch doors here on your baggage compartments. So those will slam shut and they're going to be a solid metal slam latch door. And then you have this little clip right here that will hold that in place. All underneath here, nice storage compartment space. You can see it's they kind of give it a more elegant finish here with some of the ways that they design and add pieces there to make it look, you know, a little bit less like an RV. You can still see the aluminum framing back behind here, but they kind of cover that up. So when you first open it, you don't really see the aluminum framing, which is a nice little touch. And then you're going to have welds on both sides of your frame connections. So you can see there, both sides of the framing there will have welds on them. So that is something that is unique to Keystone as well, where I shouldn't say unique, but there's a lot of brands out there that only weld on one side of the frame. So you have welding on both sides of the frame on this trailer. Close that up again, slam latch door. You're going to have two 20 pound propane bottles that it will come with up front here. And then you'll have your spot for your batteries there. So a lot of the times you can fit like two batteries in this compartment here or one really large battery if you just want more battery capacity. Added little nice touch here that is just something I've never seen before where they have this little red um, rubber piece to cover the connection there on the positive end of that battery connection. So that's something they added that's a nice touch. And then this here power tongue jack. So that'll all be powered. You also have electric stabilizers. And then this is a automotive style fiberglass front cap. So it's more of a solid front cap here versus like the SL series that'll have just a standard fiberglass front cap that won't have that solid feel to it like this one does. As you come around to the side, you can see your 
awning there, it covers probably about two thirds of the length of the RV. So both your entry doors are covered. This is gonna be your bathroom entry right here and that will be your living room entry there. And then you'll have your two outside speakers that are right up here. And th the spot right beneath that is going to be the vent for if you're cooking and you turn the fan on in the kitchen, that is going to vent the air outside of the RV. You also have a spot right here where you can hook up a TV. So your plug and outlet connections will be right here, plus satellite connections if you need that. And you can mount a TV to this wall outside as well that will all be under your awning. And in addition to the awning, obviously this is not pushed out all the way. So this awning will come out much further. I just don't push it out all the way because it just takes a minute for it to come out. But you have an LED light strip up underneath the awning here that will illuminate this entire space underneath your RV. And whether your awning is pushed in or pushed out, because of the location of that LED light strip, you will get access to it regardless of the positioning of your awning. So even if it's pushed in, you still get use of the awning. You do have a ladder on the back wall, so that is nice. You're able to get up on the roof there and you can see you have two ACs on the roof. You also have a wine guard digital antenna up there as well. And then your spare tire is here on the back bumper. You're going to have LED tail lights. It is backup camera ready. So you'll be able to install a backup camera there. It is prepped for it. And then look at how big this slide out is in the bunk room. That's how you can tell that there is something special going on in this bunk room because of how big this slide out is compared to the slide in a traditional bunk room. And then you have another living room slide right here. Um, as far as your dump locations underneath the RV, I actually haven't even got underneath here and looked yet. It looks like you have a black tank dump valve right here. So that's gonna be the black tank for the bathroom. And then you're going to have a, another dump valve right there on that side of the RV. And it looks like we have the labeling for that two gray tanks that will come out of that spot. So you'll have two different connections, but they're relatively close to one another. And then you'll have cable driven slide out. So the cable driven slides, these are going to push and pull the RV from all four corners evenly. So this slide goes in and out straight each time and doesn't damage the floor or something like that. Look at the exact specs on this RV. This one here comes in at 7,800 pounds dry, which is actually pretty light considering how big this RV is. And then you have a almost 1,500 pound cargo carrying capacity here, which gets you to a total gross vehicle weight rating of just under 10,000 at 9,670. Open this side up, you're gonna have all your water connections down inside here. Plus you'll have your controls for your uh, stabilizers right there water connections. You're going to have your outdoor shower connection here as well with this 25 foot coil hose that it comes with. You're going to have your 50 amp power cord. This is a 50 amp unit with the two ACs and then you have your 15 amp solar charge controller. So that is working with the solar panels to send power to the battery and it monitors all this so it doesn't overcharge your battery as well. Plus you can uh, scan that QR code and download an app to monitor all that information as well. If you wanted to expand upon the solar system, you can add an inverter here as well add solar to the top, and then you can start getting power to things like your outlets and stuff like that. Now, something I've been trying to talk about more and more is solar is becoming one of the most highly asked questions and things that is talked about. I think it's appropriate to talk about the realities of trying to run an entire RV off of solar. Now on this one, luckily this is a pretty long RV. So what we have determined and kind of figured out is for like one battery, if you're wanting to run the ACs, off of the battery power, which the way that solar works is solar in and of itself is not really powering anything. What it's doing is it's charging your batteries. So what it comes down to if you're trying to run the entire RV off of solar is having enough batteries that you have a big enough power supply bank to run everything on the RV. And then you need the solar panels to replenish the charge to the batteries so that you can keep that power regenerating. So. What we have determined with doing different solar setups for different people is that one battery can run one AC for about an hour. And that is typically the kind of power consumption that you get. So on something like this, if you wanna run the entire RV overnight without any sun, your, your solar can charge the batteries throughout the day, but then after the sun goes down, you're not getting any more charge going to those batteries. So you would need about eight batteries on the RV to run the ACs all night. So that is something where it can get very expensive to try to run the entire RV off of solar. You're definitely looking well over $10,000 and then a lot of times even over $20,000 to get enough solar equipment to try to power an entire RV off of solar. So 
that is just the realities of it. I've had so many people ask about this that I think I just need to continue to address it in each video and what the realities of that are. My family, we take a generator with us. Our generator literally, I mean, you, our generator was only like $1,200, but it's a 4,500 watt generator. And that 4,500 watt generator is only going to do so much. It doesn't even, I mean, it'll run an AC for a little while, just one AC, but you can get up to like a 9,000 watt generator or even a 12,000 watt generator that will run the entire RV that will be a fraction of the cost of what solar would be. So it's really up to you, but just know if you're looking to run an entire RV off of solar, you're looking at a pretty substantial financial investment into that. And it's going to take a lot of equipment. It takes more than just throwing solar panels up on the roof, which also on an RV, you're limited by roof space. A lot of people compare this to a house where like, oh, well, you know, the my whole house can run off of solar and whatnot, but yeah, your house has significantly more roof space than an RV does to throw, you know, 15 panels up there. And you can't do that on an RV, you're limited on roof space. So that's just something that I wanna continue to talk about and level the expectations for what solar is capable of doing and what financial investment it takes to be able to run an entire RV off of solar. Let's get down underneath the RV here real quick. You're going to see underneath here, it is completely enclosed. So the underbelly is all enclosed underneath here and all your water tanks and water lines will be sitting above the insulation in this enclosed underbelly. So anytime you have the furnace on, it will be sending heat to that area where your water tanks and water lines will um, stay heated so that they do not freeze on you. And that's pretty much everything on the outside. Uh, like I said, you have the 200 watt solar panel on the roof that it comes with and let's head inside. So both of your entry doors are going to have the solid steps here. So they both make contact with the ground and coming in here. The first thing is you have all this storage space right here. Passport is really, really great about all the storage space that they offer. So you'll have all this different storage space that opens up. And what I really like about these drawers here is without even having to step all the way into your RV, you can get different items that can be right here that are things that you want outside. Things like paper plates and utensils and stuff like that, cups, stuff that you wanna have quick access to that you don't wanna to have to walk all the way through the RV to get. And then when you walk in, you're gonna have your AC controls to the right. You'll have a motion activated light down here. So a nice little safety light. And all of your controls for both the sound and the RV mechanics are all gonna be right here as well. And you have a light switch right there too. Um, all your controls will be here. Your black and gray tank levels will all be monitored right here as well. And then you have your fire extinguisher there. Outlet here, this is an inverted outlet. So if you added that inverter and expanded upon the solar, you're gonna get more power um, from that solar system that will be able to power some of these outlets inside the RV. And as we come in here, like I said, forgive me, it is so hot, I'm literally dripping sweat already. So forgive me as I might wipe my face occasionally or something like that, that might distract me, but you have a barreled ceiling in here. So an added ceiling height because of that, you're going to have a residential queen size bed in the bedroom with these sliding pocket doors that give you a very wide entry into the bedroom. And then when you come in here, you're going to have windows on both sides. Plus you will have the storage all the way around. You'll have a spot for a TV on the wall right here. If you wanted to hook up a TV and then you have wardrobe storage and storage up above that goes all the way through. On each side of the bed, I mean, on this side, you have a really long bedside space to store lots of stuff. You're gonna have outlets and USB ports on both sides and you'll have a little bit shorter bedside um, tabletop space on that side there. Lift this up and you will have a strut assisted bed so it'll stay up on its own and you'll have all your storage space down underneath here. So again, sliding pocket doors going to this area with a huge entry door. So it just feels so open when you have both these doors open in this RV. Then you're gonna have a couple different designated pantry spaces or what could also be a coat closet. You see you have the clothing rod there and you'll have these adjustable shelves. Open this bottom one up as well and you have um, set in shelves there. So that is gonna be one of your designated pantry spaces. And we have the price here, so let's just go ahead and knock this out while we're looking at this. The MSRP on this one is 65,621 with the options that are on here. So that means this is probably gonna sell somewhere in the $50,000 range. I don't really like talking about price that much, but 
I know that on your side of it, being a consumer, if I were in your shoes, being a consumer as well, I would wanna know kind of a ballpark of what the price is. Um, the only reason I don't like talking about it too much is because this video will be on YouTube forever. And if somebody is watching this video two or three years from now, that price is not going to be the same. But I would hate for them to call me and ask about this RV and expect that price because sometimes they don't even know, they don't look at the upload date and they don't know that the video is two or three years old and are expecting that price. But this is just the price for this one individual RV and the prices are always changing. But like I said, it'll probably be somewhere in the $50,000 mark that I'm able to sell it for. And with that being said, I am in a sales position, so I would love to personally help assist you in purchasing this RV and be a part of that transaction and um, just give you an enjoyable experience with buying your RV. So you can text me at the number up on the screen or there will be a link down below in the description as well where you can, where you can inquire about an RV. So either one of those, you can reach out to me and I would love to help you. So if you reach out to me, I will get back to you as soon as I can and get you all the purchasing information that you need or set up a time with you to come take a look at this RV in person. Moving to the living room area, you have two recliners right here. Let's test out how comfy they are. Yeah, pretty comfy. They're not the Thomas Paine furniture, um, but that's fine. I mean, they're still very comfortable. And then if we pull on this there, let's see how far they recline back. They go pretty far back. They don't go like all the way flat, but definitely not bad. Coming down underneath here, the carpeting in here, this is like a woven kind of plastic material. And then you lift this up and you're gonna have a completely wrapped subflooring underneath here. So really nice that they wrap the flooring underneath there. I can't tell you how many brands I've done this on where you lift up the carpeting and the flooring underneath is just bare and exposed. So you have a wrap flooring underneath there. That's gonna be a layer of protection for the floor. And then you also have the carpeting here where this woven material plus the layer underneath is gonna be multiple layers of protection also. Then you have the U-shaped dinette table. So Lots of seating space here with the U-shaped dinette, plus this will make into a bed that's about six four or so in length. So six feet, four inches. You have pull out drawers to get down underneath here. Plus you will also be able to lift up the benches as well to get to that storage. But you have the pull out drawer, so very easily accessible. This bed just collapses down. You take the legs out and it'll sit on these black posts around the edge to make this into a bed. You take these side cushions and the back cushion and fill it in over the table. And that will make a bed there. So you'll have an additional bed space. In the kitchen, you're going to have a stainless steel sink. You have this flip up extendable countertop space there that will go down. Outlet underneath here. And then this storage here goes to both sides where you can see you have the doors on the other side as well. Pull these out, you'll have two drawers there that are the same size. And then you'll have a storage space down underneath here and then a really big storage drawer down under the oven and you'll have the uh, sink covers here that will go over the sink that'll be like a drying rack it's gonna have a standard size rv oven so nothing too big or crazy there and a three burner stove plus you have your vent fan here so that'll vent air outside of the rv when you are cooking you have a microwave that does not have a turntable on it, so you can fit square dishes in there pretty easily. You can see it uses this diamond wave technology. And then you have a TV here up over the living area, so you can see it from pretty much anywhere in the seating area, especially because it will come out a little bit as well. And then you have your AC here that is ducted throughout the RV. You have the blade AC vents, so these will push air out in a 360 degree motion to give you better air coverage, and it'll be ducted through the entire RV. Coming back this way, you have another pantry space or what could also be a coat closet. Same thing, adjustable shelving. And then you'll have more space underneath here as well. The lights keep flickering on and off. I must be losing some battery power here because those lights keep flickering on and off occasionally. Underneath here in the bathroom, you're gonna have your second entrance coming into here. This is going to be a plastic toilet in here. Two drawers that pull out and then shelving or not shelving cabinet space underneath there and cabinet space underneath here you also have your medicine cabinet and then you have the barreled ceiling in here so you can see that's going to increase your shower height first of all pull this out you'll have this kind of plasticky feeling um, shower curtain there essentially so that'll make it flexible 
So one, it keeps it lightweight, and two, if you hit your elbows on it or anything like that, it's not gonna feel like you're really hitting anything. Let me stand inside here. Being about 6'2", my head definitely does go up into the bubble of this shower, and then the shower head, sitting where it's mounted right now, is at about my chin level. So that's something to keep in mind where if you're over probably 6'3", you're gonna have to start ducking to fit inside this shower, which I don't know about y'all, I definitely can accommodate for that and make that work if I were in that situation, but I know some people really wanna just be able to stand up straight in the shower, and so that's something to keep in mind as well. Now coming in here, this is the most incredible thing ever. You have four double-sized bunks back here. Look at all the sleeping space. So we already saw that you have the dinette table that can make into a bed that could easily sleep two people. And then you have sleeping for up to eight people back here. Can easily fit two kids in each bed, sometimes even three. I mean, if I come back in here, yeah, I can fully lay in here. So this bed is at least about 6'3 or 6'4 on the length, and then plenty of space here next to me. Really, really incredible space. Each side will have its own lights and USB ports. You have a ladder to get up to the top bunk here, and you can see you have a 300 pound load capacity on both the ladder and the top bunk. You'll have windows up on the top bunks, plus a light USB port back there as well. And same thing on this side, light and USB port plus the window on the back. Both windows looks like our emergency exit windows as well. So those can be emergency exits if needed. And then a nice big large window on the back wall here. Finally, look down underneath here. You have this bunk and then looks like you even have some space down underneath here for storage as well. So just an incredible space that you have for sleeping capacity. You also have an AC in here as well, so we'll be able to keep this room cool for everyone in here. And then it has a TV in here. This looks like this is about a 42 inch screen TV that you have here. You could easily fit a larger TV if you wanted to as well. And look at all of the storage space. I mean, absolutely phenomenal. You open this up, you have adjustable shelving again, the clothing rack there if you want to hang up clothes. And then you have five drawers here that will all pull out. So one, two, three, sorry, four. One, two, three, four. They're all the same size. Another pull out drawer here. Cabinet space underneath here looks like this just goes all the way through. So that'll be four cabinet doors that are all going to be together. Also notice on here you have hidden hinges. So the hinges are not visible from outside the cabinet door. Nice clean finish on that. Then you have a spot down here for um, DVD player, game consoles, stuff like that, PlayStation, Xbox, whatever it may be. Plus you have plenty of countertop space here around the TV. Same storage space over here, so it's identical to the other side. It's all symmetrical and just an incredible amount of storage space. Then a couple other things to talk about real quick as we walk out of here. You do have hyperdeck flooring in here, so underneath here is gonna be a four layer flooring. It's about this thick, and it's going to have polypropylene and fiberglass layers underneath this, um, or for the subflooring, so underneath this vinyl laid over flooring. And what that is doing for you is one, it's going to be completely water resistant, so theoretically it could be fully submerged in water and will never incur any water damage. And then two, it's more lightweight than wood, so it helps save some weight as well. And it's really, really strong and durable. So a really great subflooring that they use underneath there to keep the RV more lightweight, but very durable. And you have a Wi-Fi router here, so you are, sorry, a Wi-Fi router connection here, so you can install a Wi-Fi router on the RV if you would like to as well. And I believe that's just about everything. It looks like you have a surround sound system in here as well. So speaker here and speaker there. And then let's just take one more look at this incredible bunk room space here. I mean, just absolutely insane. So cool. And I think I just realized I forgot to open up the refrigerator. So let's take a look at that as well. Because this is going to be a 12 volt refrigerator, so it will run off of the battery system. Solar will be helping with that as well. And this is going to be about an 11 and a half cubic foot refrigerator. All right, y'all, that's all I got. I am definitely sweating my butt off out here. But I was so excited 
to see that we got this RV in. I was so excited to show it to y'all. I had to get out here and film it regardless. And we're just getting to that season where it's getting hot. So I'm going to have to suffer through it a little bit, but that's what I'm here to do. So if you are interested in this RV, I am in a sales position. You can contact me at the number on the screen or through the inquiry form down below in the description. So I would love to hear from you, love to help you get into your next RV. That's all I got for y'all. Until next time, I'll see you out camping.